Do you have any more coffee for it? Let me put milk in my coffee. Yeah. Sexy and then. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. We always have to do that. Me too? No, not just me. <laughs> just me. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Olava Talks. Um, today we're having Elian Nina Hazque from uh, a fellow Burundian, actually, Murundkazi. But first, let me get started first explaining what Olava Talks is. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, you've probably heard me say this before, but I'll do so anyways for the new uh, watchers, listeners. Olava Talks is a podcast slash vodcast, video podcast idea that I developed earlier this year. Um, what I noticed was in my activism and in my, in my sort of communities of LGBT people, for example, of anti-racist activists and so on, and environmental justice activism, I noticed that I was meeting these amazing people whom through like these intimate conversations I was having with them after a demonstration or during an organizing meeting or I don't know, like just even on chat, <laughs> um, having these incredibly... Uh, uh, important and sort of like sort of very informative conversations um, that I was just sort of growing so much from that I was learning so much from and I noticed like every time I would come home and realize like I had no way to like share or record what had happened that day the kind of insight and the kind of information people shared with me or the kind of uh, theory we developed together just in talking so I came up with this Olava podcast so that I could sort of come up with a way to like record these encounters, these moments, because they're life-changing to me, and, uh, and also share them with, I think a lot of people don't have access to this kind of, you know, activists and, 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 and people and information. So that's why I started Olav Talks. Um, I think, I, I, we've stopped counting, right? How many we do at this point, because uh, we try to do once every, once every month or twice every month, if we have the funds, because we're poor, we have no money, you know that. So, <laughs> but we're trying, we're doing a really good job. Um, I'm assisted by this amazing team, technical team, uh, uh, Bergson, Cicek, and Fena de Jong. Uh, they don't like coming up in front of the camera, so I won't make them today. <laughs> Anyways, so today I invited Elian in the um, Elian, we met, uh, the first time we met was at the HIV AIDS March in 2018, in the summer. And uh, I had just spoken, I walked down, and you come up to me, and you're like, immediately like, yes, that's exactly what needed to be said, and you were like, I'm Burundian too. <laughs> and then you started telling me about all this activist work you're doing internationally, you're doing in the Netherlands, in Burundi, and, um, and I immediately started following on Twitter, and uh, I've, you know, I've had this feeling like I really would like to talk to you and get to know you better that's why i invited you thank you welcome <laughs> yeah, <not quite. laughs> so we might slide back and forth into kirundi so now and then because yeah it's sometimes nice it's very nice if i get to speak to people in kirundi oh yeah if you have burundian listening that's you know, yes marvelous. yes we need burundians to listen to this because we'll talk about that there has been you have experienced quite a lot of um of blowback, a lot of resistance from Burundian communities, right, in your activism. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Elian, welcome. Thank you. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Oh, great. Yes, you're positive always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> you're not annoyed that we changed location, like no. like last minute, just three seconds ago. No. I am just flexible. Flexible. <laughs> I don't want to know more. <laughs> no, 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 just here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, okay, what did I want to ask you? So many questions to ask you, but I'll start with this. I noticed, um, I was reading this tweet you wrote the other day, and in the tweet you talk about how in HIV sort of uh, uh, preventive strategies and, 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 and sort of activism, there is a focus on so-called risk profiles, right? So risk categories, so demographics within the, within the population that are perceived as more at risk for infections. And they tend to be queer people, trans people, sex workers, right? 
And I noticed in your tweet you talked about how globally, worldwide, uh, like more than half of the people who are infected, who are living with HIV, are people who are women, who identify as women. And uh, you talk about how, you, you know, just briefly mentioned how um, that they're not covered, they're not sort of within these risk profiles, these risk categories, they're not uh, always represented or at least like served as catered to properly. And I was wondering, because I know a lot about how in the queer community the kind of issues we face in terms of HIV activism and HIV stigmatization and access to healthcare, um, access to PrEP and stuff like that. But I don't really know much about how outside of the queer communities, what are the what are the demographic challenges, what are the issues, and I thought I'd ask you to come and tell us all about it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, we, uh, we all know here, um, starting in, in Netherlands where I live, is um, we have uh, PrEP, is mm -hmm. only access mainly for men who have sex with men. Mm -hmm. That's it. And the uh, minister did just give a call for them, but they, of course you still pay your own uh, small amount mm -hmm. per month, mm -hmm. but all description how they describe uh, prep uh, could be used is more like men who have sex with men and uh, like uh, a number of prostitutes mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, trans women mm -hmm. but I looked where are the women mm -hmm. women are not mentioned here mm -hmm. women are not given an uh, attention it's very sad because here in Netherlands we know also if HIV uh, PrEP is a, 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 prevent, a preventive uh, medication mm -hmm. that everybody should have fit, use it when you have you choose to use it. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is a risk. There is a what what you call it bivalking. How mm -hmm. about that? Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do they call bivalking? So the side effects. Side effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they should just let everybody who can use a PrEP, who wants to use a PrEP, mm -hmm. to, to, to get access to it. Yeah. But now they give only card, green card to only men who have sex with men because they, they are just a big, a huge amount, but they forget. HIV doesn't know a risk group. Mm -hmm. HIV doesn't know, uh, oh yeah, it's only, I'm going to only uh, to attack only men who have sex with the men. Mm -hmm. Why then globally we have 50% 50, 50 of HIV, people living with HIV are women. Mm -hmm. Then why they don't think, oh, let also give a chance to women. Why mm -hmm. they have always been said yeah. to make choices for women. Yeah. Do queer women have... Um, access to PrEP in the same conditions as men who have sex with men, or also not? Uh, that for what I understood is that they, yeah, they are part of the risk group. They yes, are? They okay. are part of the risk group, but... Cis so straight women are not? No. No, okay. No, but when they said the men have sex with men, it doesn't mean they have to be gay, because we know a hetero man, mm -hmm. hetero heterosexual men can also have sex with the gay mm. and they go back to the women at home. Mm. What happened to the women? Mm. That's what I was trying to talk last time with the uh, PrEP and New Continent, mm. PrEP and New Group, trying to tell them, can you please try to erase this problem? Mm. And then one of those uh, ex explained to me that it's not really, uh, it's very risky that uh, women here in the Netherlands get HIV is very small. Why do they assume risk is very small? Why do they have to, to say only, yeah, we have only big, big risk group, that, that's why it's minister they give this mm. permission. But now we cannot go back and, and, tell, um, and they tell the minister again to change, we have to wait and say, but because there was no one in your group mm. to stand up and speak for women, yeah. you were only putting your first as a man who have sex with men and that's it yeah. so the rest is it was just small groups added but it's not really like we also welcome women to use prep mm -hmm. so it, there is no even advertisement for it mm -hmm. so i uh, i'll say 
if I look at the UK, women are, are using PrEP. Mm -hmm. in, in America, you, women are now having access to PrEP. Of course, we know PrEP is not just, yeah, you take it every day to pretend, to pre prevent to be from getting HIV, but there is also side effect. But that is a choice. Mm -hmm. you, you choose to use PrEP, then you should get, use it. But without any, any, any hard feeling like, oh, or get the feeling. Yeah. Because you can use condom, you can use PrEP, but the best if you use a PrEP, you know, chances and use it as a prescribed. So what you're saying is you would, you would like there to be just more choices for cis women as well. Yeah. And, and, and this should be one that is available to them. Mm -hmm. And the cost of it shouldn't be a reason not to do it. Right, so it should be made made available in the same way that it's available for quote unquote risk categories. Exactly. Because you would like uh, women also to just cis women to have these choices. Yeah. Yeah. Because. So what I'm thinking about is like when I see uh, 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 HIV active, let's like sort of HIV campaigns, anti AIDS campaigns in say for example Burundi. Um, they're very much, uh, they're not really focused on only uh, uh, gay, like men who have sex with men, for example. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're very much focused towards the family, towards mothers, there's it's a lot of training of young girls, for example. Um, and, and I think less so, I feel like, with young men, but um, like, do you see that there's a sort of like lessons, best practice, something we can learn from this sort of um, inclusive approach to uh, to HIV campaigns? Yes, definitely, because if you look in Burundi how they do the campaign, they never mention, uh, you know, being a homosexual in Burundi is like a crime. Mm. So that's, I think, most of the thing why they are not trying to let them also, like, be involved and get also, like, like here they try to say men who have sex with men. You mm. know, in Burundi, you never see a poster or the city say, this is medication, it's for sex, men who have sex with women. But it used to be, no? Things have changed. They have, of course, they, that's what I'm trying to say now. Mm. And, 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 and it's very difficult mm. because I guess it's uh, to do with the political uh, environment mm. now. Mm. But um, it would be very great if they could just uh, also try to make focus groups and make information available, available to everyone. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, I don't think in Burundi, uh, many people, they don't, I was trying on Facebook last time to talk about PrEP mm -hmm. and writing in Kirundi and inform, mm -hmm. informing because mm -hmm. I noticed like even here, some people in my community, they didn't know what was PrEP. Mm -hmm. You have to explain what is PrEP and then you have to explain and then some people, they confuse it with PEP Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. then uh, and then that's this is a different story. <laughs> exactly, it's very important that people get right information, and this will do that also for our people in Burundi. So I, that's when I get that idea. And then we start doing small, small education, mm -hmm. even in Kirundi, because not everybody read English, no. and not everybody also understand all the French words. So, mm. so in Kirundi, I wrote it down. And uh, how was yeah. the what was the response? I get. Uh, some people come in the inbox, hey, where can I buy that one? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> in the inbox, eh? yeah. because they don't dare to say there, yeah. because something to do with the HIV, you know, yeah. preventing to get HIV. Yeah. So they will come in the inbox and say, now, I think if you really need it, you cannot just go to your pharmacy and get it. Yeah. You have to talk with your doctor and uh, go yeah. have facial to do HIV test mm -hmm. to see if you are negative. Yeah. And then you can then go on PrEP. You yeah. can just say like, oh, now I think maybe, you know, I'm going to have a sex with that one. Maybe I think he has HIV or she has HIV. And then you're going to take PrEP like it's, yeah. it's anti-malaria or something, you know? No. <laughs> Kidding. <Kineen>. Yeah. <laughs> but so, these are people who are living here in the Netherlands who wrote to you were like... Some okay. lives uh, here in, Net in uh, Europa, like mm -hmm. in France or here in mm -hmm. the Netherlands. There are also people in Burundi who ask me where can they get it in Burundi. They ask me even if in Burundi is available. So, is it? Quite not yet really. What I know is that in Kenya, mm -hmm. I know women who were even with us in the International uh, Women Summit in summer who were who were giving us experience how they used prep. Okay. So meaning, I was checking with the Burundian uh, 
HIV association if they have a prep yet. Mm. But they said we they only have uh, they give uh, like like Tuvada is that's the prep. Okay. So people are um, using the Tuvada but they are using it as medication, not yeah. as prevention pill. Okay. I used to use the Tuvada also as mm. As a medica- HIV medication, yeah. but um, yeah, so it is still a long way. But yeah. still, it, people need to know. Yeah. Then when they have, uh, they go see doctors. They can still ask questions. Yeah. Hey, how was this prep? Can I, you know, yeah. this kind of things? But the people has to know. Yeah. But um, yeah. but you would think that all these because I feel like there's been for the last. 10, 15 years, there's been a lot of focus on, uh, on, on, on training and information in terms of uh, sexual health and sort of sexual risks and so on. Um, to an extent that sometimes I feel like there is such a, that sex sometimes feels like it's being stigmatized itself, yeah. <laughs> right? So it's like, you know, um, you know, even in Kiruni, they don't mention really sex is like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, <laughs> those things <laughs> don't actually say that. But I was wondering how, for example, in countries like Burundi, where talking about sex is so taboo, yeah, and you know, like, uh, 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 where you actually, when you're talking about sex, like, it's just like even when we're talking about sort of sexual health, it's a problem because you're talking about sex, right? Mm-hmm. What What do you see works in terms of? Um, getting the right information to people, and what do you think uh, we're doing in the Netherlands? We could improve because you go to these schools as well, right? In the Netherlands, you you train young people. Are there areas where you think like it could be improved in dealing with people who come from cultural backgrounds that we're talking about sex is not is kind of taboo? What what? How does it work? How does it work? In, for example, in Burundi, talk about sex. When people don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, let me give you examples. For last time when I was talking with the pygmy, you mm-hmm. know, they are really not uh, well educated. About what? The twas, yeah. Yeah. So I was uh, talking, but you know, there are words in Kirundi to describe sex mm-hmm. without saying, you know, normally we say the baggage to be shaved, you know, mm-hmm. but you can also say, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 and that is like, uh, uh, having sex, yeah, but but then, very poetic it sort it of to, it very to let your um, genitals meet. Very <laughs> 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 beautiful, I like it. Yeah, but our genitals met today. It was very <laughs> <laughs> it was very say hi. But, uh, those are those are yeah. They say hi, the kids. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but those are the words in Burundian culture. Mm-hmm. How you can describe sex, having yeah. sex. So when, for example, you did have sex before time, you know, in our culture, they will say, what well, is it? Shave. Mm. Shave, it's like you, you did have sex, but you did sinful it's, sex. But it's, it's sin. If yeah. they see you like you did, you did have a sin. Mm. But when you are like when they're talking about husband and wife, yeah, but would you be China? because they love each other. Yeah, yeah. But it's not always the, the case. Yeah. Anyway, but then I was telling about when I was talking with these people. And those are the words you use with them. Yeah. And they will understand and they will listen to you uh, mm-hmm. very careful and then then you go on. Yeah. There is you have really to know language is very, very important. Mm-hmm. Language you use to tell them mm-hmm. without scaring them away or yeah. making them feel like oh I so shame, oh mm-hmm. disgusting, you know. Yeah. So you make sure you are very careful how to entertain them yeah. and have a conversation yeah. and then in that way. Yeah. So yeah, are 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 because the churches, for example, in Burundi, are becoming more and more conservative. Yeah. Over the years, they're becoming more and more conservative, and they're the ones who sort of dominate the conversation on sex. The mm-hmm. Christian churches, right? Mm-hmm. And they talk about it very negative. It's very sinful. It's yeah. very like you know they're afraid of all kinds of things. And every Sunday some pastor is going to stand up and talk about how everybody's so sinful because they have sex and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but I always, AIDS is a punishment and, yeah. uh, and all those things. I always say. Is, it, is there, do you feel like there's room, especially in an East African context, to make churches our allies in sort of breaking these taboos and destigmatizing sex or is it like give up on it there's just no chance no 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 i think there is room we have only you know 
one thing we, we have to unite people who are living with HIV and who, who, who believes who are who goes to church those people are the one who can make sure that over how you call it our witnesses mm. that God is just father for everyone mm. so for example when that I don't know if you remember I did the stigma campaign here in Holland in 2016 also mm. in 2015. <laughs> I had on my poster, big, big poster say, aka, aka, heave and hot half of mine. Mm. That really means I have HIV and God loves me. Mm. The reason why I say that is like, I know when I was age diagnosed 2003, doctor told me I was going to die. Mm. She said I was not allowed to have a children. She said, go buy your own coffin because God was Was that in Burundi? No, I was in Angola, unfortunately. Mm. But, um, I worked for three years, but I was taking medication, and so I was not dead yet. Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, now I'm not dead, so I'm gonna try to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So when my son was born in 2006, and he was HIV negative, mm -hmm. I said, I am the winner. Mm -hmm. I'm not dead, I have a son without HIV. So this doctor, mm -hmm. she just didn't know what she said, because mm -hmm. I'm still alive. Yeah. And that moment, God, I did pray. Mm -hmm. I did pray, say, please God, give me children, please, I, please, I didn't want to go on. Mm -hmm. And then what I always say, people who said God punishes people with HIV, I always say, God doesn't punish me by giving me disease, and same time bless me by giving children without disease. <laughs> yeah. How can God contradict himself? Yeah. So how can you explain to me a woman who gets raped by the whole village of soldiers, mm -hmm. you know? The soldiers come and they rape the whole Aga like uh, one, mm -hmm. one village. Okay, sure. And then the women and girls get HIV and others get pregnant. Yeah. And those children will be born. They, they didn't have access to medication. Mothers didn't know they had HIV. And yeah. up to the moment, children will be born with the HIV. Mm -hmm. And then how can you explain that God let that happen? Yeah. Why would a child be born with HIV? Because mama didn't have a chance to have medication to protect the children, yeah. which I did. I didn't get medication. I protect my children. I have two sons born after I was HIV. So they are so gorgeous and mm -hmm. healthy. I hardly take them to the household. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me now. I always, that when that conversation came in from in my spot, I always witnessed and said, you know what? God did miracles for me. Mm. I took medication, I pray. And children that don't have HIV. So yeah. God cannot punish me. Yeah. So and God doesn't punish a woman who gets raped and yeah. get HIV from that way. Yeah. And plus, people who go and have sex with, you know, nobody gets HIV wanting to have it. Yeah. So why do you think only sinning is by having sex? Mm. Really? And yeah. and don't you have ever have sex? Yeah. And because you don't have HIV doesn't mean you never really yeah. sin, even do other sin, which yeah. are very even worse yeah. than having sex. Nobody uh, get HIV because you want sick. So you would you would you would you would say that we need to have more uh, 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 HIV people with HIV HIV positive people with you know of faith speak out. Yes. And do testimony. Yeah. And and and, and talk about how. Um, how they you know they can still sort of live their lives in faith and with with dignity, exactly. Uh, with that you know and 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 live with HIV. Exactly because yeah. you know when God God there's somewhere yeah. that is in the Bible God mm. gave everyone talents. Mm. When you have those talents, what in Bible and Kirun they say I'm a mm. When God does talent and the HIV came in your life, it doesn't take those talent away. Mm -hmm. If you study, you go to degrees, HIV doesn't touch that. Yeah. But the thing is, when you're gonna sit down, you if you're if you're if you're an so artist, sweet. you yeah. know HIV doesn't touch that. No, it doesn't. It if you're a caring, a no. loving, a friend, exactly. HIV doesn't touch that. No, it. <laughs> but only it's happen when you stay in a negative mind. Mm -hmm. You allow yourself to go low, yeah. and then you get stressed, and then you will have a lot of problem, health problem, yeah. and then you will end up really in bed for 24 hours. Yeah. But if you only allow it, but if you take a major, take your medication every day, yeah. you're gonna just live in a 
like everyone. Yeah. But what we need to do is like also the pastors from the church need to be trained and understand what is HIV, what mm. is, how can you prevent it. And then once those one are educated, they understand it, mm. then they can give a space in the church with them for preaching mm. and they can then allow people who have HIV want to testimony, yeah. to, to testify and share the story. And then that's how they, we can educate our community in the churches. Yeah, because how do we deal with the fact that there are a lot of sort of people who make claims that they can cure HIV through like oh, rituals yeah. and like uh, raping young children? Yeah. Uh, there are all these sort of there are people who make these claims who say it's that. True. Yeah. I uh, I one last year I was in there with the also Pygmy uh, community. I was uh, speaking to them. To the, they were men and women were sitting with the children and then I took out my medication which I have in my bag there mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I put it in my hand and then I tell my story I said look 15 years I took medication every day mm -hmm. and they were like oh, so much yes but but you you look so happy yes exactly that's the point you either men here you are raping women and girls thinking you're gonna get a hit of HIV there is no cure Mm -hmm. in this world for mm -hmm. HIV. Only taking medication you can live just as chronic chronic disease. So I told them, man, listen, understand it today. This is a medication. Mm -hmm. You only go to hospital you get it treated, but you're not gonna the moment you take a girl and a woman and you go and sleep around, just you are spending it and then if you don't watch you are so numbered of in your community you are so led really little. So in, in, in one, two, three years you are all gone, mm -hmm. finished. And then, yeah, um, to tell that that is very important also um, these people to yeah. understand. So people who claim, back to people who claim that they hear HIV, somebody was saying, I was getting really crazy with this Kabuka testimony. People, I was having HIV for 10 years. I was listening to Kabuka every day. Who's Kabuka? Kabuka is a, is a radio uh, uh, postcard. Uh, what, what you call it from Burundi? Uh -huh. It's a, a religious um, okay. uh, audio. Uh, he will talk every Tuesday for my mom. And he claims that if you listen to him, so listen uh, and then we will be praying on the line. So people listen to him every day, and then they will come next time. They're gonna testify. Say, when you are there, touch your heart when you have heart problem. When you have uh, HIV, touch your belly or whatever you uh -huh. know. And then after that, oh yes, God is finished to do miracle. I see a woman there was having HIV just here, and that man was having ejaculation problem. Is gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> and then there would be uh, and then and then and then after that. You know, this is on the national radio, and we know how Burundians love to listen to. There the is, and they share it now. There's in you know, WhatsApp. You know, it goes and goes and goes to. Not on here, the whole world. You know, every Burundian who's there, they can listen in Kirundi. Yeah. Some in one also listen. And then the, when there were people who testify about being cured of HIV, I will get like a hundred of Kamua in my inbox. Uh -huh. Listen to this, please. You're going to be here. going to say, hey, I am here. Who Are you stronger than me? Yeah. What is missing with me? Yeah. Uh, and then I ask, don't you go to hospital when you get malaria? Yeah. And you can you take a cure, kinin, yeah, until you are fine, yeah. But you know, like the thing is about this sort of this sort of people. Like my mom was also going a lot to these kind of uh, 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 a lot of red churches, and my mom has struggled with diabetes and hypertension for many many years. And at some point, one of these one of these yeah, prophet like sort of prophets people convinced her that she had been cured of diabetes and hypertension. And that uh, getting tested regularly, because you know if you have diabetes, you have to do checkups and so on. That that was like gonna, that was a way of doubting God. And then if you would do it, then God would make would make it seem positive, because then yeah. So you had to trust the fact that you had been healed, but like checking up on that in any way was not that was doubting God. And then you would. So my mom like did for ye, for like a year or something. Um, did like no, didn't take any insulin anymore, was eating whatever because that was proof to her that when she was taught that that was a way of like showing to God that you trusted him. Mm -hmm. And she's no checkups and eventually by the end of the year she had a stroke. Mm 
Yeah, see? And they convinced her, obviously, that she had done something bad. Uh-huh. But I'm like, you go for like a year for like, if you have a very serious diabetes type, you know, know. Uh, hypertension on top of that, you go for a year without like, anything, you know, any care whatsoever. Of course, you're gonna end up. You're you're not even you're not even you're a woman who had you know six children. Like <laughs> you're no longer like a young person. You, know, you had no. six children. Your body cannot handle. You know, uh, she's like she was like in the fifties, no, in the late forties by that time, and she had a stroke. And I think sometimes with with all these sort of claims of HIV sort of being able to be cured, sometimes I think, and maybe I'm wrong, but sometimes I'm like, shouldn't we, should we criminalize those kind of? I think they're supposed to be punished actually because they are really they are, they are lying to people. You know what happened when people claim that they are healed? Mm-hmm. It is. A state of undetectable. When you are undetectable, mm. you are like they cannot find a virus in your blood. Because you've been taking because you are taking medication, then your virus is no longer active in your blood. So when they don't find it, they will tell you you are undetectable. And these people are coming to claim, yeah, I am here because they didn't find it. But doesn't mean it's gone. It's somewhere in your body, located somewhere in your organs, maybe. Yeah. But then it's not uh, circulating in your blood anymore. That you can just. And if you stop, everyone. obviously. If you stop then, that's what happened because that those story we never heard after the end of those people mm-hmm. because then they get sick and then they get ill and they die. Mm-hmm. They get very sick and then the pastor will never come back to tell us, oh, by the way, people... I killed someone. <laughs> no, exactly. No. Yeah. So that's why I always say like, you know what? If tell you me are... more about this undetectable. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me more about that. What do you mean no. undetectable? What does that mean? <laughs> Meaning you are um, your um, the amount of filler rot in your blood mm. is is it's less. Mm. So meaning your virus is not active. Okay. So and uh, it is there is a, a part in a study they did uh, more than ten years ago. And then uh, they found out that when you ha- you are undetectable, mm-hmm. you can have sex without condom, mm-hmm. and you cannot give it to your your sex oh, partner. Wow. So, and that news it had been hidden between doctors and scientists. They didn't let us people know why, it because they choose for us. They thought maybe is people are gonna be naive, maybe that they are gonna just. Uh, because you have to stay, when you're undetectable, you have to stay undetectable. The moment you become detectable, you can transmit then it. you can transmit it. But when you're on medication, your virus is already on under suppression, mm. meaning you cannot, you cannot be active. Yeah. So we were. It was only it was last year when they accepted officially and all organization working with HIV and all scientific and all. But not all the all the HIV doctor mm. were open to discuss with us yeah. people living with HIV and the people living with HIV were very many many. But that's that is such great news. Exactly, I said also like it is a very very uh, powerful tool yeah. uh, tool to use to uh, to educate and to reduce the stigma because once you know I am. I cannot transmit it because believe me, there are people still believe that when we shake cup or we shake toilet seat, you can get my age away yeah. from me. Or oh, mosquito bites may come to you. They still think yeah. you can still get uh, HIV. Yeah. But see, so imagine that this news, if you cannot get HIV by having sex with somebody who has HIV, mm. who is on undetectable level, meaning there is a great news for people who live in Stigma yeah, but, that's, uh, but also like I can just imagine, I, I just simply mind-boggling. Like, why would you keep that news when we know that so many people who are diagnosed have to deal with depression, with you know, yeah. with 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 anxiety disorders, with suicidality, yeah. because of these ideas, these archaic ideas about them not being able to love safely, not being able to bear children safely, not being able to, you know, all these different things that lead to very real deaths to really destroy lives. Yeah. Why won't you tell people like, hey, if you take the medication, if you take care of yourself, you will be able to, you know, to live a life 
where you're not, where you don't have to be so afraid constantly of causing harm or, you know, like, why would you not share this to people? Yeah, that, that means, changes people's lives, you know? Exactly, it takes time. Or but, partners uh, even, I mean... Yeah, it takes time when uh, finally they realize they have to let, to let it officially be known and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, since then uh, we are trying to, to use it in social media. Yeah. Every time I get chance to talk to people around me, I just also make sure I check if they know what is undetectable because mm -hmm. untransmittable and then uh, all equals and infectious and then people say oh i didn't know can you believe people still get shocked to hear i mean like old generation even new generation they say if you can have hiv negative children when you are hiv positive yeah other people know they yeah they say yeah is it possible i mean not i have family possible. members who have who have you know like who have hiv were hiv positive but don't uh, the kids don't who have many children kill, kill children yeah no not exactly but then Exactly. This this information, it's I said like prep and U equals U like undetectable equals untransmittable. There are two. Remember that. Very undetectable equals untransmittable. Remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I already knew that. Okay. So smart. I was like, don't you know? A lot of people don't. Congratulations. Yeah. Well <laughs> so I, I say like those are two very important information to share with people. Yeah. First to know PrEP you can choose to use PrEP to prevent for you from you getting HIV. And then U equals U is also a, a, a tool to use for fighting stigma mm. to make sure people who are also uh, not who don't have HIV they are not they don't have to be afraid because they know if you are HIV positive, for example, mm. can look at you not, and I am in love with you, mm. we can just go on. You know, HIV should not stop anyone to love, and you know, you don't have to. If you are HIV positive, you, you don't have to look for HIV positive person to fall in love with. Mm. I see many people struggle, say, yeah, I don't dare to to be open, so I can fall in love with somebody, but I cannot tell because I'm not sure what the reaction will be. Yeah. I mean, and the reactions can be quite negative still, of right? Of course, yes, yes, because this is exactly because they don't know yeah. the update from HIV. Now, when you are still thinking, oh, somebody with the HIV is dirty or is dead, sentence, you know, then you know, you don't, they, you know, that's the reason people, they don't want to do HIV tests to find out their status. Yeah. Well, again, you I can... I don't want to know if I have that thing, you know, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I notice this as well because every time I go to festivals, like queer festivals, I always have a bunch of queer people around me of color. Mm -hmm. And I always go test, because there's always somebody testing. Mm -hmm. um, at these, like at Kwaku they were testing, mm -hmm. at Pride they're testing, you know. All kinds of events where queer people come together, they're testing. And I always tell people, let's go test together with a bunch of us. Let's just all go test together. And a lot of people really freak out. They're like, yeah. no, I don't. I don't want to find out. I don't want to find yeah. out. Well, <laughs> if you find out. It's the best. It's yeah. the future. Yeah, yeah. Look at me, 15. Yeah. Now I'm sick out of official. I'm 16 years old age, I guess. So. And looking matter Oh, no way. Yeah. I am just gonna <laughs> keep shining. <laughs> and I wonder, like, also, like, with uh, 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 what you're saying about untransmittable and undetectable. Uh, so you that that's something which you feel like is important so that people can destigmatize um, being HIV positive. And I see, for example, on Grinder, for example, they have this new in your profile you can add whether you're HIV positive or not. Yeah, that's something which you can put in your profile so that people before they start talking to you already know your situation. But sometimes. I can understand that, that you, because I also put on my profile, for example, that I'm trans because some people I don't want to talk to. Yeah. Because, trans is under Sudan, the disease. Yeah, no, but it's stigmatized in the, in the, in the, in the, there are issues, there are issues, there are issues there. And sometimes I just like people to know who I am already before they come talk to me. Okay, okay, okay yeah. <laughs> because, because, because no wasting your time. No wasting my time. Exactly. But I also feel like a lot of times we sort of ask people or require people to give up their medical status and Why? their information. I mean, if you're undetectable, do you have to tell anyone? Exactly. Why would you have Why to would I tell when I know I cannot give you disease? Yeah. Are you telling me what you have? Yeah. You yeah. know the problem is... We should, if nobody walks around with a whole list of everything. Hey, like, okay, look so. at me. Yeah. I have nice blue, yeah. my HIV in my face. Yeah. Hello. 
Well, one thing I you know, they always would put pressure on people living with HIV. We people living with HIV, we are lucky because we know it. We take medication, we take care of it. And so, but it's also personal and private. And if, that, if you have cancer or you have like a among us, hey, if you have a gonorrhea, put it on your profile. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ask you to do that, no. but how often people they meet? I know my study, but you never do HIV test in your life. Yeah. But you are just in your green, they're looking for a partner. The moment you see somebody with the HIV, you go, oh, no, 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 I'm, I don't dare. Yeah. But do you know your study? That's yeah. the problem. Probably, you already have working years with the HIV with you, but yeah. you don't know it. But what you're doing only, you're going to go and green, you're going to just spread it. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Then I'll think, I'll if they put, I have to put my study on my HIV positive. Then you come on Glinda, you have to do HIV test to know, you know, you are yeah. sure of your status. Yeah. Then we are going to know each other. Yeah. And then I know your status. And then when we really decided to go together, yeah. we go again do HIV test together to mm -hmm. see if you really, your status cropped. Mm -hmm. Because people will put fake one, eh? <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They, will, they will just put there because they want to make sure if they make rules, everybody put status. You say, okay, HIV positive, HIV negative. Okay, we meet. Okay, you decide, oh, I'm just gonna because I know you because you so I will ask you about it. Are you undertake for yes? Okay, then I really like you. Let's go. Mm -hmm. say, okay, before let's go, let's go do test together. I am undertake for and I want to know your real status. Mm -hmm. Then we can go further. Yeah. That's how we can touch them. Yeah. But unfortunately, the burden is always with the people living with the it's HIV. Okay. Yeah. It's like we are zombies, like we are just a bullet or a bomb, we're gonna kill you, you know? Yeah. It's not true. Personally, I think, um, also with being trans, for example, there's so many information that we're supposed to get, tell people. What I feel like, that's your personal, private information. Like, I don't go around asking everyone that I am, you know, meeting online or otherwise, like, oh, have you ever had malaria? Do you have malaria now? <laughs> because that's infectious as well, right? Uh, do you have, have you ever had STDs and which ones and so on? Like, it's private medical information and I think, because sometimes this basis of like, you have to tell people your medical information is also sometimes the basis for criminalization. Yeah. Or people which I so like in some countries, if you don't say anything to someone, no, you might mean, be you go and go to jail because yeah. um, you are uh, they will tell they will accuse you are you are just infecting people. Yeah. When you know when you are infected, but you cannot infect anyone. Yeah. Why would I take responsibility for you? It's your body. Yeah. Your body. Yeah. You need to take good care of. You know you need to know what is going on with your body. Yeah. Don't come and blame me about. I know my, my situation. Yeah. I'm talking about also anyone. If it's a trans woman or women or men or whatever, whoever is HIV positive, we know. We go every, some go every six months, some go every three months to do checkup. You give your blood, they check many, many things. Mm -hmm. We are very well controlled. Mm -hmm. We are followed up by the doctors, professionals. And you are coming to accuse me, I am the danger. Why? You never, you don't even go to the to the doctor to check, to do mm. check up of your general health thing, problems, mm. and then you think we are the one who are in, in trouble. People who don't do HIV tests, people who don't know their own uh, HIV status, they are the one who are the danger, because they are the dangerous in society. I would mm. say it should actually be a duty for everyone yeah. to just to do HIV test. But if you're sexually active. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah, because don't think like, oh, I'm gonna eat Snoop without a uh, plastic jacket, or so I'm gonna eat uh, uh, like uh, take a lolly in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, when I say, oh, no, I didn't know that that lolly was so infected. Yeah. Where were you? Because nowadays, people don't have excuse. They can go on Google. Google knows what but do people know? Them. Because you're you're still teaching in schools and stuff. What is your what is, what do you feel like? Do people really know enough? No. To make um, conscious decisions, even in the Netherlands, huh? like. No, yeah, I'm talking. I live here in the Netherlands. So I see what's happening yeah. here. Yeah. So sometimes that's what triggered me to think about talking in Kirundi to people in Burundi online because mm. what I observe here, mm -hmm. you know. 
They do you feel like people know enough? Like with no. the people you're meeting, the people you're training? No, the people... they are not, they, they don't know enough. Let's say, give you an example, like you're sitting in a class of like uh, uh, 17 children, young children in college, and then you are talking about uh, HIV, so they're specific. And then you have like, you have a mosquito, and then you say, okay, this mosquito bites me with HIV and come to you, bite you. Do you think that uh, you can get yeah. HIV? From 17, 15 were saying, yes, you get yeah. HIV, naturally. That's what they said. And then I was like, well, how do you know? Are we in uh, Timbuktu somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the generation that's, you know, hashtag generation, eh? Mm -hmm. You know, hashtag. <laughs> eh? Hashtag generation telling you your mosquitoes, you can just. And then another one from the uh, dirty toilet to say, oh yeah, when a uh, woman who has menstruation left the blood there, you're gonna sit on that blood, you're gonna have HIV. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wow, okay. And That's then, you know, it is a generation hush. And this is ROC. This yeah. is like, yeah. this is kids who have finished uh, Midbash. Midbash. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So then, you know. Some of them are already sexually active as well. Of course. Mm -hmm. They are like, yeah, of they already are. Yeah. Uh, there was some who already have first baby, mm -hmm. some leave that area, like the 15 year area, mother's cup, so. But then you, you, I feel like so sad, like, what? Mm -hmm. This a lot need to be done. But you know, nowadays, they go in the media, they will check on the news, on gossip. Oh, what man he Trump had yesterday. They know what kind of broker that Trump <laughs> walk with the toilet paper under his shoes. That will be big news highlighting, but people, they don't want to check like, okay, now I am so scared of this disease, I would really like to know about it. You just Google what is Are HIV. Are people scared of HIV still? They are scared because of the, the reason why they are scared is the reason they don't want to do a HIV test. Mm. They don't want to know if they have it. Yeah. And when you don't want to know if you have it, meaning you are scared to have it because you know, you think for negative that you're going to die, they say the life is over, so you don't want yeah. to, to go through that or maybe some people still have all the images of HIV like AIDS mm -hmm. when it was really like no medication at all people mm -hmm. were just gonna diagnose and they're waiting until the final breath yeah. but that's not it's no longer like that the big have ch things have changed you yeah. know I came from 20 uh, pill per day to to four now I take four tablets but some of that now they take one mm -hmm. so in two months I may change from four to two or to one Mm -hmm. It's because of I'm um, doing combination with my uh, diabetes. Yeah. I have already 20 years diabetes. Oh really? Yeah, I started diabetes before HIV. So that's how yeah. I get HIV by, by uh, getting given blood in the hospitals in Burundi, mm -hmm. and then they use a dirty needle, and then mm -hmm. I get it like that way. So there's about like wow, that's intense. What is intense? <laughs> well, you go to the hospital, you think you're safe, right? So you and then. Uh, Everything you cannot control things, you know. You cannot even know who did it that day. You just yeah. go every two weeks. You go. But you know, getting sick is part of being alive. Right? Exactly. <laughs> it's part. Okay. Like if you live in Burundi, every year you have malaria. Yeah. <laughs> every year, every season, you yeah. have malaria. Believe me, I've already. Um, my family already lost a sister of the bottom of the cancer, like mm -hmm. it is. I lost another one with the enemy. Uh, she gave birth, and then after it was the war, they could not take it anywhere in the hospital. Oh, wow. It was blocked because of shooting, bombing mm -hmm. everywhere. So, hospital was recently robbed by the robber groups. There was mm -hmm. no blood in the hospital. They could not take her in Bubanza or in Bujumbura. Mm -hmm. So she died, yeah, and wow. her twins died first. And her after three days, she died. Three people died. And then that was in one year. And then mm, my mom. My father, nobody was there with AIDS because no. of HIV. No. And, I, and and then my brother, who we was together diagnosed with HIV, uh, diabetes 1999, mm. he died in 2015, complication of uh, diabetes. So oh, wow. they did try to do what's called dialysis, yeah. but uh, they knew already. Already, gone. yeah. So then he died. Why I'm watching? You know, mm. and why I'm living with the HIV and why I'm living with diabetes, but I'm still here. Yeah. Because I know, I know where I want to be. Mm. I want to see my children. I work so hard for them not to get HIV. So I want to see them growing. I want to see their children. 
you know i want to be oma grandma i want to just enjoy my life until i get like i didn't know i, I would even reach 40. i was 25 when they told me you're going to die you have wow. hiv so now i'm going to be 42 mm. in november 20. so then i say like i'm aiming to go grow older and what do you do you take it action i do sport I do my music, my, I continue to do what I did before my HIV, HIV came in my life, mm. which was the music and dance and, mm. and the writing, sometimes I write the poems. Or Traditional Burundian music or? Yes. Oh, really? I, I, I play an instrument uh, in Donongo, it's like uh, from Kaoho. Yeah, I love Donongo. And I play in Donongo and uh, I, I dance, I, now I have even... Teach me! <laughs> I don't have to know that yeah. long. I have, a, I have an our children's show coming for November in, in a Kutir, a Budarai, Kutir in Amsford. Okay. So children come to listen in Migani Avan, where I'm going to play an instrument and then I tell the story of Rugwe and Kaveva. Oh my god, I'm coming over! I'm <laughs> so I am going to be there. The I'm also a child. child. I can't be yeah. a child. <laughs> Come every day. No problem. <laughs> so I will be doing that sometimes in a festival in Amsterdam. I just play and then. I do you know a lot of Burundian traditional stories? Yes, I do. My mom, my mom always taught me one. Mm -hmm. The story of uh, Sangima. 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 My mom would sing it to me, Sangima, Sangima, Mama Wawe, Yakuvuze, Sangima. Nyako Wawe, Sangima, Yakuvuze, Sangima. Nguri Gufa, Sangima, Yitore, Sangima. Nguitongo, Sangima, Yabatuti, Sangima. Oh my God, I can't. I can't, you know, Mura, Imba, Muka, Imba, Muka, Ina, Ima, Uwe. Oh my god! Awesome. My mother also used to sing that one. You're me. making me so happy right now. No, like, really? So when are we gonna start recording you? Like where you do you go to today? In yeah. I'm. 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 I'm I, I can. Uh, I can send you. Um, but you will you be recording this, or is it gonna be in Dutch, of course? Mm, I I sing I I, I it's uh, Dutch children, yeah. so I I do. I oh, so I, I can understand it too. Yeah. Of course. Right. I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a recording. I just go perform on stage. I sometimes I give people uh, to film or whatever. Do you know if you would start recording these children's stories, the songs in Kirundi with subtitling? Do you know how many Burundians would watch this? I don't know. Because we're losing these stories. Huh? Yeah. But what I do, I tell first the story in Dutch mm -hmm. because I'm going to play instrument and then I will tell first in Dutch what this story is about mm -hmm. and then, I will, uh, and then I, will, I will sing it then in the yeah. I'm so excited! <laughs> I did first the story, first the story was a dancing princess, <laughs> Yasmin. There I have, I have a big baby, it's a girl, it's very uh, dark like me. Yeah. Sometimes I put in my... In my uh, Gongo. Okay. <laughs> and then I put it on my mama and then I'm just going to sing and then I put it there, sit there and then I'm going to dance so I dance with it in my hand. Uh -huh. So it was very success. That's how I get booked for uh, uh, that uh, show. Oh, wow. So now I'm going to tell the, the story of Rukwe and Kaveva website. Okay. You know? So, yeah. Wow. But that's an interesting story, right? It's about the turtle and the... And the and the rabbit, right? Yeah. Who have a Ingwe Ingwe na nakabeba. Ingwe na kabeba. Yeah. In in beba na kuvuga in beba ni na kabeba. Small small mouth. And you have a competition, right? They have a competition. Where did you learn all these stories? Who taught you these stories? Uh, I uh, I had I I used to love my my grandma. Only one I know in my life was uh, mother for my father. That's the only grandmother I know. But when I, she was, uh, I was seven, she died. Mm -hmm. But I used to sit next to her and hear the story. And after that, I carry on with my other cousin of my father. She died when she was 108 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was a real bibliotheque of uh, yeah. and stories. I yeah. used to sit next to her. She would tell me a lot of stories. So I always like to sit to 
even when I go in my village, I just go to visit the oldest friend of my parents, uh. just to just keep on refreshing. Yeah. So and then, uh, yeah, I. But there I, are so many stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, in my show. I used to say like with Kuth uh, Kamadzina, uh. you know. Oh, like, like, oh, like, do you do that? People don't do that. You can do it with also. Yeah, the but I'm not trying to talk away, but I'm recording on the top of my camera in my body. You can do the rhythm. How can you do it like that? Yeah, I, when I was younger, my dad used to listen to this. Yeah. He had these old recordings of like people coming and stuff like that, but very old, maybe like four or five, and I'm, or like the whisper song. Yeah, Inang, Inang. Inang. And, I would, and I would not be interested. I would just not be interested. But now, sometimes I spend the whole day like on YouTube trying to find these things. And I can see in the comments section that people my age mm. who grew up in Europe but also grew up in. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's what. So you should do something with that because we want to know. Yeah. There's a whole community of a lot of I think young Burundian uh, uh, diaspora, but also I think in Burundi itself, whom you know we're taught in the in even in schools in Burundi, we're taught that this traditional poetry, literature, singing is not interesting. It's not relevant. It's not as good as yeah, like as European yeah. uh, things. And I think for people to share this information is also a kind of activism. For people to keep on keeping that alive, I'm so glad that somebody who's almost my age knows these things. Yeah, but I have been, you know, I've been the, whole, so I've been the whole my life. Doing this, you yeah. know, when I was in primary school, I just could nice quickly uh, when we call it Kore, mm. I would just make up songs and then we're gonna perform them. And, and you would make up original songs, yes, mm. my own songs like that. And then we would make a, a, then we just perform it in front of parents and, and the teachers. And then I, I was like, I would go home, I take the cooking pen, I take it to a stick and then I play drums mm. and uh, when I was in, uh, in high school I was the only woman in the same ones who was dancing on Muyere. they could just uh, sing with my Muyere. Um, I only know Amaya but what's um, 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 is other sort of dance okay. but it's not from uh, Imbo uh, place uh -huh. but then you are wearing the Amayuki uh -huh. and then you are wearing something like uh, it was like uh, from uh, dry grasses okay. so uh, and then you uh, go like this uh, the, uh, only men dance that? That was only men. Mm. So have you I heard know. about the new dance group of the, the Ingoma group, the uh, uh, drums group, who are all women in Bujumbura? But me, they're yeah. so good. Yeah, my dad is now. You know, the minister of uh, is forbidden. The, the, yeah, it's forbidden. But me, in 1999, I was in the Lycée Etoile de Gender. Mm. I am the. I started the first female group. Who did play drums? Really? In 1999. And y'all would go to. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. And the directrice was very, very. Uh, you have to whip the hair, was, okay? It was, it was, um, it was that time. It was like uh, uh, that congregation was. Uh, 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 like a, uh, like a Catholic school. Yeah. And then. We're only girls who had only one. And you started doing drums yes, and started yeah, the group. Yes, yes, yes. I started the group. And uh, until now, on my wedding, I played drums. Everybody was like, wow. On your wedding, you played drums? Yes, I did. <laughs> I, 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 I have a video of that. When I look at you, you were used to that. I, and you started, oh, but I They are, they are. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Then they come to invite, like they always come to invite the, the bride, you know, and then you just stand some. They just then have no clue what to do. Yeah. And then when they give me, I could not wait to get there. Mm -hmm. bum, 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 and then I dance, I dance, and then everybody was like, huh? I can, I can, in the weddings that I've been to, Burundi weddings, I'm pretty sure if that would happen, mm. like people would faint. People would be like, what? <laughs> what, yeah. the hell? what just happened? <laughs> I mean, in Burundi, we don't even let a woman do ijambo, like speak in front of people. Yeah. That's already difficult. Yeah, but yeah. the Radis do do that, though. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. That's why I say I think that uh, in that song I have on YouTube, the one with my father said, 
murumye jambo sintinya kurivuga sintinya mubaga ona data ni mugabo sama wanja oh wow do you have to try that out if you take if you if you um if you refuse me the right to speak i will take it myself i am not with it, well, i'm not afraid of men even my my father is one right that's powerful that's a song you wrote when you were uh, i have it on youtube yeah okay. oh. so okay. yeah Okay, listen, so I think before we have to start closing up, but I think we have a new project. Uh, we're going to start a singing and storytelling group here in, <laughs> in the Netherlands. I am going to be your first member. <laughs> but you have to teach me oh, how to sing. I want to produce me. Yeah, no, no, no. You, have to you have to teach me. We're going to do like a, a, a singing troupe. Mm -hmm. Like they do like these dance troupes and this, this, uh, and this Ngoma troupe. Yeah. We can do a storytelling troupe and you can teach us. Mm -hmm. I, I, I ask if there's... Me too. <laughs> do you speak Kiruni though? Oh, we need to have the Kiruni. If there's any Burundian people right now listening, and you're here based in the Netherlands, right? right? And, or Belgium even, even Belgium. And you are passionate about Burundian storytelling and you want to learn the songs, you want to learn the instruments, and you want to learn how to make your own songs and stories, Contact Eliane so we can pressure her <laughs> into teaching us. <laughs> well, make sure your, your portemonnaie is, uh, is full in God, it's, it's in YouTube, yeah? It's in YouTube. <laughs> uh, if you have some time, take it. If you have some time, not that good, so not that's for free. Nothing, don't worry, no. uh, Listen, I honestly hope that I am going to uh, see you perform soon. Mm. And I hope I can learn from you because, wow, this is amazing. You just made me so happy right now. Mm. And thank you so much for sharing about, yeah, we're finished. No, 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 I want to say something before because about also uh, education. Yeah. We need also keep going because yeah. most of our people also here, yeah. that are, they don't know. Yeah. So uh, I am Stigma Fighter, of mm. course. That's my website also for if there is a... For the thing I call it education or mm. training, mm. you can also, I don't know how many organizations you work with or your colleagues or your clean friends, yeah. you can always. So you, again, so get in touch, not only are we going to try to pressure her into starting a singing group, <laughs> but if you want some quality training workshops um, relating to stigmatization, destigmatization, HIV. HIV prevention, HIV activism, and how to be just simply fabulous, right? Mm -hmm. uh, get in touch with Eliane. Uh, we will, when I post this online, I will add her Instagram and her Twitter and her Facebook page and her website. Yes. So um, I, bless, I wish you many, many blessings. Thank and um, I'm very grateful for the time you've taken to talk to us. And a good luck with everything. It was fun talking by love talks. <laughs> hey. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>